welcome to The Money Movement, a show where we explore the ideas in digital currency and blockchain and its impact on society and the economy. So much happening. Uh, excited today uh, with Ronnie Rumberg, the founder of Audius, a, a, a blockchain native creator platform, music streaming platform, music monetization model. Um, very innovative project that I've uh, been following for some time and excited uh, to, to have you on and, and join us for a conversation today. Jeremy, thanks so much for having me. I'm uh, excited too. Awesome. So I, you know, I, I generally like to just sort of like, you know, give you an opportunity kicking off here just a little bit. I'm, I'm interested in just your, your own personal journey very quickly, you know, uh, what brought you to this project and, 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 and what inspired this project? Um, and then we'll get, uh, obviously dive a lot more deeper. Yeah. So, uh, uh, this uh, kind of feels like the, the logical conclusion of the through line through my life in, in a way, uh, I was a, uh, musician in a past life, never professionally, but I played drums for, for a long time and then kind of evolved from that into just being a voracious collector consumer of of music um mostly i guess like through the uh, uh 2000s and then in in the early 2010s um and while kind of doing all of that where i did find my calling a little bit more was uh at least professionally was in software engineering so uh, uh kind of uh, started working in high school as a, a software engineer in, in various capacities, and then in college, uh, continued that and uh, was really interested in, excited about distributed systems sort of problems. And, and that's what sort of ended up bringing me to crypto inevitably. Uh, so there was a, a group of friends of, of mine and I, uh, when we were in school at Stanford in like 2011, 2012 or so that started mining various altcoins at that time. And, and uh, you know, turned into a great source of beer money, especially because electricity in the dorms was, uh, was free, right? So you could kind of, uh, uh, you know, you could you could uh, mine as much as uh, as much as you wanted, and and uh, have you know no basically no costs, especially with um, using outdated hardware that other people had cast off and were selling off on on eBay and elsewhere. So, um, so yeah, was you know kind of interested in, excited about the possibilities around crypto and decentralization, um, and and where these two worlds collided, I guess was. Um, after school in, in 2015 or so, I was working at the venture firm Kleiner Perkins. Uh, I was covering crypto for them, actually, from you know, the kind of uh, work I'd done around the, the space uh, previously. And um, I started to see, you know, a lot of the fav like my favorite content that I had collected and curated over the years on SoundCloud start to disappear. And I also saw a lot of my favorite creators on SoundCloud choosing to leave the platform at that time. Um, and some of those folks were friends of mine. So I, I started asking them, you know, like, why are you, uh, why are you disabling your SoundCloud account? Why are you um, taking your content offline? Um, and, and the answers I heard were, were roughly, you know, aligned around, them feeling mistreated by uh, uh, SoundCloud and by uh, the choices they were making towards their community. Um, and, and I don't think it was any fault of, of SoundCloud's what they did, but um, you know what I, I was able to learn a little bit more about it through my work at Kleiner because they were involved with uh, the company. They led uh, uh, financing for SoundCloud and, and were uh, that, that was prior to me joining. But um, I was able to get a little bit more insight there into what was pushing and, and motivating these choices. And, uh, um, you know, it was really they're, they were kind of backed into a corner, right? They were running out of money. Um, they were having a hard time raising more given some of, uh, uh, you know, the, the legal issues they may be facing. And they made in, in quick succession a, a number of rash choices with respect to their community that led to this exodus of, of users, content, and community. And, um, you know, it just made me start to think and was talking to my now co-founder, uh, Forrest Browning, uh, about it at the time. Uh, he was w one of those friends from from that friend group in, in school um, that, uh, you know, we were, we were just chatting about, like, what, um, how could, how could you prevent this, right? Like, how can you, how could you keep the incentives and uh, uh, the goals of the 
kind of companies operating these networks aligned with the communities that come to rely and depend on them over time. And uh, that was the original genesis of the idea of Audius. Um, you know, we, we, I would call it sort of like a streaming co-op is, is what we had envisioned uh, being able to, to create. And uh, te from a tech perspective, the tools to do what we wanted to didn't exist at, at that time. Um, uh, and we sort of shelved the idea, moved on, but came back to it in uh, kind of late 2017 or, or so uh, when I, I decided to leave Kleiner around that time uh, uh, to get back to building stuff. I, I kind of missed that. And um, Forrest similarly had had sold a company at that time or six months prior and was kind of getting bored at, at the acquirer and thinking about what might be next and started hacking on this and turned out, uh, you know, we could build a little prototype. Um, Ethereum and IPFS were the two things that enabled that, that, that hadn't existed in 2015. Well, Homestead, I think, had just come out in 2015, but the state of developer tooling and, and everything there was like not at a level where, you know, we felt it was, it was reasonable to be building with. So anyway, uh, yeah, it's all, all very long winded, but that's, that's how Audius began in early 2018 or so we officially kicked, uh, kicked things off. No, that's awesome. Um, I'm 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 always interested. I mean, I, um, I I sort of stumbled into the internet in my dorm room too. <laughs> yeah, but that was uh, it was it was it was quite a while ago. It was back in like 1990. Um, but you know, I, I I didn't have a technical background. Um, but I'm always interested. Um, you know, with 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 folks who have been diving into things like distributed systems, and um, it, you know, I, I think computer scientists or engineers um, bring a different kind of understanding to, you know, blockchain as a pattern, as an architecture. And, and actually one of the themes that I've been talking a lot about, you know, just trying to educate people. Like I was just, I uh, spent several days with people in Congress. And, you know, I think when, when people hear crypto and blockchain, they immediately just think this is like people trading Bitcoin. Um, and th there's just very little understanding of the technical innovation that's happening here. Um, you know, wh when I came to this space, similarly, I looked at this as like, oh, this is like a new distributed operating system. This is a new platform that you can build new classes of, of software with that just haven't been technically possible before. And um and still, even today, I mean, this is like Web3 is now finally catching uh, as like a concept, right? It, it's existed since really Vitalik's white paper and when people started talking about, about these ideas. But it's it's just now kind of coming coming to the fore because of projects like yours, right? There's projects that are launching that are um that that are that are building on this. But maybe just talk for you know a, a moment about as a technologist, when you think about the infrastructure layer. That's sort of in front of us and what it means for society. Um, and obviously we'll talk about what it means for, for musicians in, in, in more detail, but like, what is, what, is, what do you see as a technologist? What becomes possible here that just wasn't possible before? And what does that represent? Yeah. I mean, I, I think the, uh, uh, from a distributed systems perspective, there are some really, really neat things enabled here. But all of those things, at, at least you know, from from my like kind of uh, uh, background in the area, uh, research-wise and otherwise, are like fairly iterative uh, towards what existed prior. I think the the things that are much more interesting here actually are the economic structures that we now have and the ability to economically incentivize like behaviors of groups towards like common goals and, and common incentives. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, more, I, I guess that like kind of, kind of uh, a trend more broadly, what I'm, I'm so excited about is these opportunities for the actual users and contributors of, of value to uh, uh, given pieces of software, um, whether that's you know, social network style products like uh, uh, Audius, or whether it's uh, more infrastructure layer products, um, you know, that that uh, might be helping uh, folks deploy and run smart contracts or, or things like that. Um, it, it's it's almost like we we now have a business model for open source software when one never really existed in the past, right? There was like, you know, yeah, you could be Red Hat or, or, or um, you know, Datastax or something and sell like service and support around 
your open source software or like Cloudera where they even, you know, forked off of the open source stuff and make their own kind of weird distribution of it that's kind of diverges from the open source stuff. But like those companies incentives are always kind of at odds with the uh, open source community is. And, and I saw that when I was working at um, this company called Nebula in, in like 2012, 2013, they were like the kind of service and support uh, uh, company trying to, to make uh, uh, open stack and that whole stack of, of software be something that was commercializable. And, um, you know, we, we almost, our, our incentive as a company was like not to release certain features and things out to the open source community because it like benefited uh, the company's ability to right. sell better. Whereas here we finally, for the first time, uh, uh, can have these community owned commons uh, uh, be financially solvent and like make sense, yeah. right? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's incredible. And I, 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 I try and sort of explain to people that, you know, the internet never had an economic infrastructure. Like there, it didn't have any economic infrastructure. And it's not just about representations of money, right? That is important. And we'll talk about USDC shortly too. But like, I think it's, it's these, you know, these building blocks that allow you to create structures that allow people to interact and, and, and not just transact, but, you know, form economic relationships in an open way on the internet. And that's just, it's just such a breakthrough. Um, and, and, um, we actually, we just launched an episode on, on DAOs and, um, you know, there's, there's so many different dimensions to how economic activity can now be, be, be evolved. And, um, no, it, it, it it's a huge piece. Um, so maybe, maybe, um, that's just helpful just to hear, hear how you think about that as well. Um, and I, I'd love to explore some of the technology choices that, you've made in, in, in building uh, Audius as well, but maybe just let's start at a little bit of a higher level, like um, give us the state of Audius today. Uh, I'm an artist, uh, I'm a listener, uh, what happens? Yeah, so uh, uh, as a uh, artist or a listener, you can actually just show up uh, to audius.co or there, there are a few other uh, uh, front ends that other folks have built for the, for the protocol as well. Um, you can just show up there, sign up with a username and password. Uh, your browser's locally generating both an Ethereum and a Solana wallet for you and encrypting the um, kind of uh, seed for that wallet using your username and password. So it's kind of, uh, 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 it's a non-custodial solution, right? As a user, you have control of that, but we're able to sort of meet the same UX bar that folks are used to. That's pretty um, clever. And then you can That's click great. around and yeah, yeah, you can click around and, and uh, upload content. You can do uh, uh, whatever without needing to know there's any crypto there at all. Um, when you're interacting with the network, you're actually interacting with these uh, uh, third party nodes that folks in our community operate. So there are two types of nodes in, in Audius. There's uh, this so-called discovery node that indexes all the metadata for the content on the network and produces uh, uh, you know, kind of a normal like API that you can search against and mm -hmm. look up stuff, right? So I can be like, what are all the tracks that Jeremy uploaded, for example, right? Um, and then uh, there's a so-called content node that actually is uh, uh, storing and pinning content on IPFS that's mm -hmm. being uploaded to the network. So, um, so yeah, because of I think that that sort of usability bar we were able to uh, maintain. Today, we see nearly 7 million people listen to content on Audius every month and uh, awesome. around 200,000 artists have uh, uploaded. Yeah, it's uh, That's incredible. been when pretty mind-blowing. Uh, yeah. When was it? Uh, in May or something? In, in, in Miami. Yeah, yeah, we've doubled since then. Oh my God, that's amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, compounded I mean, uh, exponential growth is is a hell of a it's a hell of a beast. Yeah, <laughs> you know, absolutely. Our, our poor community, uh, uh, you know, all the engineering folks in our community have, uh, you know, they're the true heroes here, keeping keeping everything afloat through through all yeah. that growth because it's not it's not easy, right? Um, but uh, uh, it's it's been pretty amazing to to see, and that's all with you know not a dime spent on on marketing or anything else. Uh, back to these economic incentives, right? Our community is the audience marketing team. The community is uh, uh, the 
um, kind of service and support team. They'll even like there are folks that just hang out in this Discord uh, Discord support channel and will like you know they're not getting paid for that. They just want to help support uh, uh, this thing. Um, it's been really cool to see. I mean, our, 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 our kind of core project team is only 25 people and we're able to, to service this very, very large community um, through, through that leverage, right? That's incredible. Uh, I'm, I'm so psyched for you. Um, what, what, um, so may, maybe just talk through uh, the economic incentives themselves, like, um, how how does that work for the different participants and um and and you know i'm sure you have a vision for for where that goes obviously over time because you you've kind of you have the protocol and and you and you have the the digital asset and um you know the beautiful thing about these you know protocols and digital assets is they evolve and can take on new utility value and meaning and everything else which is also remarkable but um yeah just just walk through at a at a high level um, how the how the kind of economy works, so to speak. Yeah. So uh, uh, as things are today, um, you know, Audius is still promotional in in usage, right? So the folks sharing content here, um, they're actually not monetizing the listening behavior that users are doing. But what they are able to uh, uh, to do right now is earn uh, ownership in the network through the form of the Audius token. So. Um, there are these kind of token economic incentives for uh, behaviors that are seen by the network as increasing the value of the network, right? Um, uh, uh, so there's incentives around uh, things like creating a playlist or uh, uploading content that gets listened to more than a certain threshold. Um, uh, so you can, uh, as as a user, you know, creator in the Audius ecosystem, you can actually get like uh, effectively. Uh, gain control of your means of distribution by contributing value to it, right? Um, and uh, uh, there are even now um, API integration incentives. So there, I mentioned there are a few, uh, quite a few third-party interfaces. I think actually now somewhere on on the order of seventy or eighty uh, uh, third-party applications have integrated the Audius catalog and and Audius network. Um, and and the top, uh, uh, I think it's the top five um, API users uh, are so able powerful. to earn rewards. It's yeah, so powerful when you don't have to be focused on like being the the consumer layer and you know yes. people can, can can build i mean usdc is a little bit similar like we're like here's an infrastructure here's a protocol i think a lot of people would find benefit from using it um and and then it just it gets hooked up and then obviously that creates value for for the network so to speak but um uh that's 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 incredible and that's like that's pretty fast <laughs> that's like it's still early days right and uh and and such a um such a huge departure from like tightly controlled user experience by a, a centralized party, right? It's sort of distribution takes on a completely new meaning. It, it really does. Um, and, and we see, so, you know, our, our team built the first Audius client, right? And the kind of the yeah. reference client. Um, we see that being the reference client over time though, and that shouldn't be the, the primary kind of uh, uh, engagement um, tools. It's more like, uh, uh, being able to provide a uh, something for others to base their implementations off of, which is, uh, you know, is it's open source. Folks have, have already forked it, and even uh, uh, you know some features like dark mode and and stuff like that. Our community was like, oh, we we want like different color scheme options, and like you know, you guys aren't listening, so we're just gonna do it. Um, that's great, right? That's like the whole power of you know for for uh, uh, you know I'm I'm uh, definitely dating myself self saying this but like if anyone remembers the days of like winamp and like you know the, the skin, I, like the I, skin ecosystem like, absolutely yeah 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 oh. i mean it wasn't what weren't things just so much more fun when when we had a little bit more control and and yes. uh you know, and you didn't have to, um, you know, take advantage of those features. But uh, as a consumer of music and a, a fan of music, it was just amazing to get to uh, uh, to get to you know control some of that listening experience that that happened, mm -hmm. right? And um, you know, I, I do, yeah. Anyway, I can talk on this for days, but um, you know, to your point on on USDC too, I, I think it's such a uh, it's such an interesting kind of flipping of, of the way of thinking, right? Where we're saying we want 
less control of this network. We want less, right. uh, uh, fewer users to be using our interface compared to the other interfaces because yeah. it makes the network stronger, right? Um, and and uh, it's just completely the opposite from uh, uh, you know the way yeah like we it, you know we both worked in in traditional tech for for a long time that's just yeah. completely the opposite from the way folks would approach things right which is let's lock things down more let's have more control let's uh, add more um, uh, you know tolls and and uh, uh, gatekeeping at the edges because like we can control or, or get more value out of out of the thing yeah. but this this way of thinking, you know, really at, at the like 100,000 foot level is, is saying, you know, we can grow the pie by a greater amount by opening things up. Uh, and, and therefore, like even, you know, it's, it's better for us, you know, as, as the folks working on this, sure, we own a smaller percentage of, of these things overall, but uh, the pie is so much bigger. It's, it's, just you know, it's it's yeah. uh, uh, it's it's better for everyone, right? Uh, yeah. our, ourselves included, and I think that, yeah, it's this abundance kind of way of thinking that uh, kind of I think has underpinned all of uh, all of the amazing stuff people are doing in crypto. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I mean, obviously, like in the social space, right? That you probably remember really well, right? When Twitter launched, Twitter thought of itself as a protocol. And, and it was like, what was the Twitter protocol? And anyone should be able to build on it. And they encouraged like tons and tons of clients. There were so many different Twitter clients. Um, and, um, and, and I think they didn't have a monetization model. Uh, and it was hard to have a monetization model if you didn't control the client. And uh, that, that basically led them, led them to kind of shut that down or much more tightly control the way in which that you know you you could you could deal with Twitter now that's evolved over time, but you know it you know in a model and I I know people including Twitter itself is working on you know social protocols right um, providing incentives uh, to to protocol users um, and and that's exactly what you're obviously doing um, I guess two two questions like when you think about centralized platforms like Spotify. And you think about where they are today, um, the business model dominated by subscriptions, what it means for artists, you know, let's say your growth rate continues like, like it is, you know, for two years, I think it gets pretty big, right? If you, if you have that growth rate, you're doubling every four months or whatever that is, uh, you know, I don't know what the numbers you get, you know, in, in a few years, right. That'd be pretty big. So let's say you're, you never, 200 million end users, how many artists, what does monetization look like um, in, in the future? Um, and, 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 and how is that, you know, how's that experienced by the ecosystem? Yeah. So I, I, uh, you know, though I, I just mentioned audiences usage is, is all promotional today. That's obviously not why, uh, this network was built, right? The, the, um, the goal here was to, uh, uh, give control and ownership of that fan relationship back to the artist, um, and then build out like a, a suite of tools with the community that allow artists to leverage those relationships to make more money, right? Whether that's selling folks uh, digital merchandise, let's say, uh, or being able to sell them direct access subscriptions to, uh, you know, some exclusive gated content. Um, I mean, there are even, uh, uh, you know, and, and it, it gets even, even further than that, right? When you have the ability to control who at what time can access what piece of content because you you as as the creator can can see and have some control of that interaction every single time um you know there are some artists in our community that are uh, uh building tooling to make it so that you can only listen to a piece of content above a certain uh, altitude was was the idea and uh you know when we we're talking to this uh so it's a, a, a well-known artist. I unfortunately can't say who, but, um, you know, when we were talking to their team, um, I was like, well, I have no idea what kind of Oracle you can use to report like altitude. Um, they actually were, were uh, pretty clever. They figured out, you know, there's only a, there's a finite number of ISPs that serve that like in-flight internet. 
Um, so if you just match the IP address against like the known uh, uh, blocks for for those like Panasonic satellite ISP or or whatever, you actually can say, hey, only people who are accessing it from like the the you know in-flight Wi-Fi uh, can can listen to this. Um, it's just so cool to think about, right? The possibilities created by this free market for for content. Um, so so the first of those monetization uh, tools are are going to be going live next year, um, and and, and uh, um, you know, it'll. I think the the place that we see it making the most sense to to begin. Um, you know, there's there's quite a delta between what the protocol enables, right? Which is what I just described. This like uh, uh, complete programmability around uh, what content be can be accessed when by whom, um, and how that actually you know practically makes it into the hands of uh, of consumers, right? Um, there's, uh, I, I think the first sets of use cases here that, that, uh, our community are most excited about are, uh, fan clubs. So being able to charge a, uh, a recurring subscription to, uh, uh, a, a, uh, you know, an opt-in segment of your fan base and give them some sets of exclusive benefits in exchange for that. So, um, things like some portion of your catalog being behind uh, uh, that paywall, um, maybe being able to access uh, recurring um, Twitch mm -hmm. streams and and other modes of engagement with the artist, uh, even social engagement within Audius being gated on that. Like if you could uh, potentially comment on a track uh, uh, or comment on that artist's content only mm -hmm. if you're in in the fan club. So. Um, so these are like the simplest and, and kind of uh, uh, lowest hanging ways to, to start to chip away at that from like a tooling perspective. But the neat thing about this, right, is that's that's like our idea and conception of, of how this uh, could begin to work, right? And that's just from talking to a ton of artists about what would they use and what would they care about. Um, folks in the community are already building like many other variations of, of things as well. Um, and I suspect that, that the most successful monetization uh, uh, structures here will not be things that like we come up with, right? It's, right. it's going to be things that uh, uh, artists cobbled together from like existing kind of uh, 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 tools in our ecosystem. And then seeing that emergent behavior, someone will say, oh, hey, let's build just like a right. better way and, to do that. And right? we'll see, this is this works and then people will repeat it and scale it. Exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. So uh, uh, the artists that are kind of at the vanguard of this uh, in Audius are going to be the ones that kind of do that experimentation publicly with, with the community, right? And uh, that's going to be really fun to see. Um, so uh, uh, anyway, tying back to your original question, you know, how do we differ from Spotify, from Apple Music, from from all of these uh, uh, other kind of uh, networks? We don't see ourselves as competitive with them, right? This is just a very different um, engagement model and way of, uh, you know, if you're if you're an artist on Spotify and you have like three million uh, monthly fans, uh, you don't know who those fans are, you don't know where they are, you have no ability to uh, send information to them or access anything relating to that. Um, I think Spotify lets you send an email once a year to uh, uh, your fans uh, or people who've, who've opted into that communication. Um, they actually exercise some editorial control over what you can say in that email as well. So you like, you couldn't link to a Patreon, for example, or, or something like that. So, um, I, I mean, I, I don't think they've, uh, you know, what Spotify has done there is is wrong or, or anything. It's just, it's it's a mass market right. product, right? And uh, where we see Audius fitting into this market tapestry is, is being the tool chain that lets artists identify and financialize super fan relationships, right? Because right now they don't even know who those fans are, right? Like who are the people who listen to my content on Spotify like a hundred times uh, uh, more frequently than the average, right? Um, those are people who are already coming out to my shows, who are buying my merch, who are yeah. uh, uh, wanting to support me um, in, in all of these ways. If I can give them like, some better experience, uh, they will happily pay for for that because they get to deepen that relationship with with me. But it seems like also, I mean, that is totally that is you know creator economy like super aligned with what is unique about what you're doing and 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 building these mechanisms of control and and then openness, right? So people can 
can can innovate in that space. But it does seem like, you know, you're incentivizing, you know, high quality curation, which forms distribution, you're incentivizing protocol distribution. So like, I guess my point is just like, like, you should be able to create mass distribution, right? But in a different, it's a different model, which hopefully is one which is more aligned with deeper forms of of discovery for people, um, uh, as opposed to like, licensing relationships. Um, that's, yeah. that's absolutely right. And I, I think the, uh, uh, the way that you get to identify those super fans, right. The people that are going to spend more on your content is by building up to a, some level of scale, right. I think what we've already begun to see with artists, the vast majority of artists make, um, uh, uh, you know, a, a de minimis percentage of their total income from streaming, right? Um, uh, uh, the majority of their income is coming from like touring and, and merch and these other channels that I mentioned. Um, the logical conclusion of that is that the value of like content on its own starts to go to zero over time, right? This is marketing right. and and kind of lead gen into the top of funnel to find those fans that are actually going to more deeply engage, right? Because um, they're you know artists, uh, especially in in kind of the the middle tier and upper upper middle tier, right? Like less than uh, you know tens of millions of of monthly listeners, um, they're earning so little from streaming right now. It's kind of like you know may as well make it free and not have that uh, uh, friction for fans wanting to start to engage with me for the first time. Right. Right. Um, I have, a, I have so many questions, <laughs> but I want to, I want to um, uh, kind of tack uh, to, uh, to a couple of like technology questions. Um, so um, talk about your use of USDC or, or where you see USDC becoming powerful in the context of, of, of audience and, and what you're building. And, um, and, and I may have a follow-up question on that, but I'd, I'd love to hear you, you know, kind of connect the dots there. Yeah, so uh, uh, USDC launching on Solana was a very pivotal thing uh, uh, for us. I don't know if I ever got to tell you that or if we ever talked about that, but um, that that step and and part of you know us us building on Solana was a bet that there would be uh, uh, USDC support on Solana at some yeah. point in in the future. Um, that's what enables all of these great things that I'm, I'm talking about, right? If uh, uh, if every time I consumed your monetized piece of content, I had to spend like fifteen dollars on on gas fees oh to, to yeah. do that, right? It just never work, right? But um, now I actually can, I can send you a cent of USDC or like five right. cents of USDC and have that be like something that financially makes sense. Totally. To do, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so, uh, uh, as, uh, so what was really neat, I mean, part of the reason Audius didn't launch with uh, monetization features native to the network from day one was that just wasn't technically possible to to do these things I'm describing until more of, of the ecosystem kind of caught up to, to yeah. what the needs of, of something like this were. Um, and and over the last uh, eight, nine months or so, that's kind of very resoundingly happened, right? Everything from kind of the fiat to crypto on-ramp tooling yeah. that's available in Solana to the, uh, 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 you know, the kind of like wallet support and and you know really primarily support from you all on the Solana network natively right so there's not some like bridging nonsense yeah, totally, happening to, totally. to happen yeah. and yeah. and um that, that's the enabler for all of these these use cases we're describing right the way i see that fan club subscription working is is in USDC yeah. right um and and so to do uh, you know i i think one of the really important things I, I'd call out with respect to the Audius native token and the token economics around that, like I, I think it's it's important to differentiate like what is ownership and governance control over right. like uh, a network and what is like the medium of exchange or right. value, right? right? Like artists right. want to eat, slam eat those food together. and yeah, it, it, it's it's confusing, right? And you've seen a and lot. You just create unnecessary friction, right? Yeah. If as a user, I'm trying to consume a subscription from you as an artist, and like I'm buying Audius tokens, sending those to you, and you're right. immediately selling them, 
that right. doesn't like do anything to uh, 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 to to help the token. It just creates friction for you and yeah. for me in, in that transaction. So, oh. um, so yeah, that's that's where you know we see USDC being kind of the the primary medium of exchange within this audience economy, right? Um, and and uh, uh, that kind of financial railing underpinning all of these uh, uh, sorts of interactions that can happen. It's now possible for me to say, hey, like I'm I'm gonna charge a cent every time someone listens to my track. And if they don't want to listen to it, that's fine. But yeah. um, you know, it's it's a free market for content, right? I can yeah. do whatever I want. And and uh, you know, there are even some artists in our community wanting to, with that paper stream model, go as far as to say, you know, hey, I'll charge like ten dollars every time someone listens to this. And sure, maybe like ninety-nine point nine percent of people that come across it won't listen, but the, that small percentage that do, they're going to really care about it and engage with it. Um, and and uh, um, yeah, so so having like a a, a kind of a, a a programmable native like means of exchange that that can uh, uh, operate like in Solana alongside of all of our uh, uh, sort of um, engagement uh, uh, tracking tooling and, and everything else. Like every time you listen to something on Audius now, that's generating a, a transaction on chain on, on Solana. So it's it's so trivial to add to that, like, yeah. you know, a payment or even like a logging of uh, that event such that, you know, if I'm part of a subscription pool, the fact that I listen to something can be logged for the future distribution of, of payouts there. Um, uh, you know, the, you this is about, all like, you know, payment gateways all over the world and, you know, yes. it's, and it's, and the, yeah, I mean, the unit economics of like a cent costs you a fraction of a cent, uh, you know, or, you know, like literally you yeah. can make almost any, any form of, of, of kind of payment flow work. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's also, I mean, this is the stuff we dreamed about and it's so cool yeah. to see, you know, programmable money working. Um, and it's like converging with a lot of other like things that, that are, are part of this. this. This is such, such, I mean, the whole story of what's happening in crypto right now is all of these building blocks are enabling all this creativity and composability is often overused as a phrase, but like in reality, it's like just taking all these, working with them together, it's just unlocking so much that just was not possible on the internet. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I was asked a question last night by someone who's like, you know, what, what, what you know, why it was actually kind of a, a stupid question, but it was like, why wouldn't I just use cash? Well, OK, you're not going to be using cash to use Audius, that's for sure. But um, but uh, the, 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 the bigger point was like, I think people have a hard time conceptualizing that frictionless, instantaneous, free exchange of value um, on the internet, programmable exchange of value. They just don't understand how powerful that is and what people can do with it. And, and that's the other point is like, we have, just like you were saying, you, you don't know what people are going to do, how, what they're going to build in terms of other forms of distribution or monetization, curation, et cetera. We have no idea what people are going to do either, but the fact that we can just make these things available and, and then creators in the sense of like you, like as a protocol developer can, can weave it in is just, is a beautiful thing. And this is like the network effects of all these things happening. Um, it's really exciting. Um, it's uh, it, it's really exciting. Um, I, I guess it, it ties to one other, like somewhat of a technical question, which you somewhat answered already, which was, um, you know, when, when you're thinking about like, quote unquote, web scale user experiences and high fidelity user experiences, I mean, you, you made a decision to support Solana as, a, as an important architecture um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to just hear you talk a, about that for a moment. It sounds like USDC being on Solana was really important. We've heard that from a lot of people in DeFi and, and NFT markets, other things too. Um, but, um, I, I'm just interested in, in, in what you see and, and what you see happening in that community as well. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, we, we've, so we decided to build with Solana in August of last year. Uh, yeah. So that was actually Same prior here. even to, Same yeah, 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 yeah. 
Um, and uh, uh, yeah, that was prior to the Audius like mainnet even launching. We mm-hmm. we saw the writing on the wall that the rate that engagement was growing, even at that time. At that time, we had like 150,000 monthly users or 100,000 monthly users. Um, the product was less than a year in the market um, by by then. Uh, so we launched publicly in September of 2019. Um, so, yeah, fast forward to August, it's like 11 months later or so. And um, this for us was really, uh, 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 you know, an, a, a choice not of, um, you know, like kind of making some prescient uh, uh, predictions or whatever of Solana doing well over time or, or anything along those lines. It was just purely like we needed the, you know, more throughput than yeah. we could find anywhere else. We could project out. I mean, actually, the projections that we did at that time ended up being quite accurate with respect to, you know, at usage levels that we're at now, like six to seven million. We're seeing like high hundreds of thousands of, of transactions per day hit Solana, like on, on really good days, uh, uh, over a million. And um, there's just nowhere else you could do that, no. right? Um, and right. we tried and looked at everything we could find. Um, there are other things that could do it, but it would be cost prohibitive, um, you know, and, and uh, uh um, there are, you know, and that's only a very small handful of things. Um, so, you know, the, there just wasn't, uh, there was no other choice. Right. Um, and, and I think that that was, uh, you know, I mean, putting aside the fact that like the Solana foundation and team are all great, they've been super supportive of us and have been really, really helpful through this migration. Like, um, you know, I don't know that they even realized it at that time for, for us, we had no option, right? Like without yeah. Solana, I don't think uh, Audius would would exist at the scale that it does yeah. today, just because there's no other way to to kind of do this, right? Um, and and uh, uh, you know, what's been cool. So it's it's awesome to hear you you all decided around the same time because we you you and and us and like the Serum folks were yeah, basically totally. these lone lone uh, uh, people making that choice. There was no one else really building in, in Solana yeah. land at, at that time. And, uh, um, you know, it was really a, a uh, it was a leap of faith. But in our case, we we felt we had, uh, you know, either we could make the bold choice and, and leap forward, or uh, we were, you know, doomed to to stay like this tiny, uh, yeah. tiny thing, right? And um, I'm really glad in retrospect, we made the choice. And and of course, over the last year, the the ecosystem around Solana has completely blown up, right? In, in a great way. I mean, like, it's, yeah, just, no. it's, it's huge. Um, and and uh, we're seeing so many great founders and, and builders uh, starting to play in, in Solana just for the same reasons that you and I uh, uh, saw, or well, I'm assuming you you felt similarly yeah. to us, but I'm curious where, where you all's take was too. Um, it was just, it, it it's the same same sort of uh, theme that we keep touching on. Like when when you can reduce the cost of transacting by a factor of like one thousand to ten thousand, and can increase the throughput by the uh, a similar yeah. factor. We don't know what the possibilities are, um, but something like Audius is is an example of that, right? Like where this couldn't exist without that very high throughput base layer. Um, uh, I'm very excited to see what others come, right? Uh, uh, USDC enabled micropayments more generally, I, I think is is gonna be a, a huge game changer for a lot of different media use cases and, and others because um, as much as like we, you know, you, you, we, we've seen these micro payment kind of structures experimented with for right. years and years, but the UX around them was always yeah, was, horrible, right? Awful. You were basically, yeah. yeah, you're depositing money into some walled garden and then right. you could only play within the walled garden and then there were fees exactly. to pull out and there, you know, um, it just didn't work. Right. Whereas these default composable tools yeah. that we have now, like someone from Audius could, auto auto stake their usdc into some like yield generating Absolutely. thing um and now their their audience balance generates them interest over time i mean it's just and that's all like for free right yeah. for free as in there's no cost uh uh no implementation complexity to do something like that it's just it just works um yeah I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's incredible i i i, I think I, I feel privileged to be able to be, you know, involved in this now and, and can see how, how there's just going to be, again, like 
what people are, are going to dream up with programmable money um, and, and do is just, it's just, it's unreal. I mean, for us, just looking at the, some of the technical decisions as well. I mean, I think for uh, we've always been, you know, just focused on, okay, we, we look at, you know, blockchains as this sort of new economic infrastructure. And we think about USDC as this, you know, programmable money. And, you know, it's interesting if it can be retail scale and, and, and like, and it's interesting if it can be like what I call capital market scale. So both of those use cases, like retail scale usage with consumer applications that have you know hundreds of millions of users, eventually, right? We need to be able to do that. And at the same time, you need you know Serum is is the is the sort of the opposite, um, which is you know you, you need you need throughput and capital efficiency to make a market function. And if you want to actually have capital market structures that are on chain, like you have to have these things too. And, and, um, and so we, we look at both of those like retail scaling and capital market scaling and like, we, we need that. And um, so that, that's really what, what drew us to, 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 to want to implement it. We had embarked on a multi-chain strategy, as you know, USDC runs on, on several, you know, chains and, and we will continue to innovate and, and, and experiment with chains because there are, interesting developer communities and, and, and growth. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're happy to, to support, happy to support that. Um, but we're also, you know, we're, we're very excited about the traction that's happening, um, with, with, with apps, um, and, and platforms like Solana as well. So it's, uh, no, it's, it's an amazing time, um, with, with all that. Um, that's, that's just, uh, that's just awesome. So, um, w- maybe just kind of wrapping up, just st- st- sort of stepping back um, a little bit, like um, as a founder, right? You, you dream um, and, and uh, we all dream. <laughs> um, eight years ago, I was dreaming of programmable money that could do the things it's doing today. And, you know, it, it, t- it takes a while. So as you like think about dreaming a little bit in that, like, you know, five years from now or whatever it is, in the realm of, of what's happening with Audius, what do you see? Yeah, I think the the vision of the future we we always had and, and have been building towards with, with Audius is to remake the economy that exists around music and around the brand equity of, of an artist um, to enable, or, or I guess really to, to rebuild that economy on the foundation of direct engagement, direct interaction, and uh, uh, you know, no intermediaries controlling and, and sitting between these relationships, right? Um, so there are a lot of downstream effects of that. We think artists will make more money in this world. We also think that uh, uh, you know, artists, will, artists and listeners will have a greater degree of Kind of fulfillment that they can get from interacting with and, and hanging out with one another and, and everything else, but um, uh, uh, you know that that core principle that uh, as as a creator on Audius you control your audience and no one can uh, uh, you know it, it kind of no one can can govern what you're able to do with that audience, right? Like if you want to. Uh, sell those people like concert tickets. Um, yeah. You could ask the question like, you know, who of my audience are connecting from IP addresses in Cleveland and I'm going to go play a show there. Like, let's tell those people that, you know, there's there's a show happening. Mm-hmm. Um, just real, I mean, really, really simple stuff like that that we take for granted in tech land that you can put a Google Analytics tag on your website and know everything that's happening. Um, artists have no idea. Um, so I, I, I really want to get to this future where, um, you know, the majority of an artist's fan fan base and fan relationships uh, are actually in uh, networks where they have control of, of them, right? Um, and we're not the only ones building towards this future. There are a lot of other um, kind of projects and, and tools and and things that are kind of uh, adjacent to our work at Audius that are building in, in similar directions. Um, folks working on everything from like concert ticketing to like new forms of, I mean, all of the NFT yeah. stuff we've been Massive. seeing around uh, so-called digital merchandise. Um, you know, this this is uh, this is not just us. It's going to yeah, be no, like- that's, uh, that's another uh, piece. Yeah. Like, th- things are going to get built. It's gonna be like snap, 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 right? It's just it's, yeah, they come together. It's, yeah, so yeah. so you know, really, where Audius fits in in that world is is as the the means of distribution to fans and and kind of that 
I, you know, I, I almost liken it to like a, a CRM for your fan relationships, right? Uh, and, and that kind of, you know, all of the data being generated across that relationship, um, you know, being able to be aggregated and accessible from one place that's programmatically accessible, right? Um, and that's one place from a logical uh, uh, perspective, but not from like a corporate control perspective, right? Because it's it's kind of like, um, you know, the network effect from the developer side also reinforces that kind of aggregation of, of data. So, um, so yeah, very excited about uh, uh, this future that, you know, like we're getting to build alongside of you all at, at Circle and, and so many others, right? That, um, you know, together we're, we're going to, to bring this future into, uh, uh, into existence in music and uh, in so many other categories as, as well but uh, you know that's music's our lane and, and that's where hand, i'm focused and <laughs> yeah yeah big a little more than uh, a little more than full at the moment but uh you know it's all these are all like good uh good problems to be having around scale and and uh everything else absolutely ron neil it's really great to have this conversation i'm so excited about about what you guys have done and um yeah, we're, we'll look forward to keep working together. Likewise, thanks so much for having me. Absolutely.